Hi there and welcome to this week's quick tip video. This week we're discussing hit points. Now the manual says that hit points mark musically relevant positions in audio files. That's all well and good, but what can we do with these musical marks? I'm going to highlight a few excellent uses for hit points. Let's start by going into the Cubase preferences and making sure that we have enabled automatic hit point detection. Go to the editing section, select audio and over on the right hand side, ensure this box is ticked. When this function is turned on, any audio file that we load into Cubase will automatically have the hit points detected and they'll show up as distant vertical lines behind any waveform that we click on out in the project window. This is so useful with large projects because we can use Alt or Option and N and B to scroll forwards or backwards between all of the different hit points in our project. We can instantly see if a bass note is out of alignment with the beat that the drummer is playing and it means that we can go in and have a closer look at those hit points in the sample edit window. The automatic hit point detection is really good and we can also go into the sample edit window and use the transient slider to ensure we've captured as many as possible. If we feel like we've missed some, we can also go in and manually add and also delete hit points in the sample edit window. Cubase is really good at asking if you want to create a new version so you don't lose anything. But next up, I'm creating audio warp markers using these hit points. And now if I go up to the audio warp tab, I've got a few different options. The one at the top says musical mode. So I can select musical mode and go up to my quantize panel and select a quantize setting that I want to apply to this audio file. I hit audio warp and then quantize and immediately it locks the beats into the grid, which is 1 16th. But if I want to free warp these tabs, now I click on free warp and I can go and see exactly where the bass notes are out of time with the grid and I can just drag them across. You can see how easy it is to pinpoint these bass notes exactly on the beat. And I can do this with every audio file in my project. I've done another quick tip video on this, so please go and check that out if you're interested in using the audio warp. Next stop, I've gone over to the media bay in a blank project, and I'm just dragging a sample straight over it into the project window. Now I'm going to double click and open up the sample edit window once again, and go over to my threshold and start moving this around. As I open it up, you can see it captures less transients, but if I bring it down and capture everything, then the vertical lines once again show me where the important musical markers are. Now, I want to go in and create events. So as soon as I hit create events, it splits that track up into separate events or even little small parts. Now I'm opening up Groove Agent 4 as an instrument, and you can do this with Groove Agent SE, by the way. And I'm going to highlight all of these events and drag them all over to the bottom of the first pad. Now those events are represented on each pad. So I could actually match these samples to a drum trigger. They also assign a main pattern to that first pad inside the pattern bank. Now I've gone back to the original sample and I'm using the threshold to capture all of the transients. Watch what happens up in the quantize panel when I select create groove. I click on it and immediately a customized quantize setting is applied based on the groove inside of this audio file. Now that is really good because that means we can now go over to our media bay, turn off audio files and select MIDI files or MIDI loops and find something that we want to work with. It's simply a matter of clicking on it and previewing it. Now that sounds completely different to the drum pattern that we had in this, but let's drag it in for demonstration purposes. This is how it sounds. It's ridiculously straight and it doesn't work with the drum groove. But let's quantize it and have a listen. That's a drastic change. Let's listen again. I think in summarizing, I could say that hit points give us a musical mapping of different concepts or ideas in our project, be it MIDI or even audio. We can analyze different audio or MIDI parts and create our own DNA, which allows us to bring in other ideas and adapt them to fit the environment we've created. That is a really creative concept. Thanks for taking the time to stop by. I'll catch you next week.